24 gigabytes of memory for under 600 bucks, <laughs> maybe. Also, Sparkle sprinkled some rumors, confirmations, and denials about the future of Battlemage graphics card. The single greatest keyboard ever made is almost here, and it's tied in with one of the most bingeable shows ever made. Is it White Lotus? Is it Last of Us? Righteous Gemstones, maybe? I don't know, make your predictions now. New drivers with performance boosts, our first real look at the next generation of gaming, and tons of leaks, rumors, and news that keeps us big as hell. It's time for Meta PC's news, let's do it. Now we've seen a lot of this Zora demo. Here is an artist's visualization of what will happen to your card when you run this demo. Is this accurate? Is that, is oh, that real? No, that's real. That's not a visualization. That's a real card. It can't be. Pushing the boundaries of computer graphics requires extreme processing power, especially when you don't have rasterization. Uh, Nvidia's tech demo Zora showcases this by offering this is entirely path traced, a path traced experience built on the capabilities of the new 50 series cards. The demo shows real time renders, real time of detailed scenes with real time path tracing, a feat that would have been impossible just a few years ago. Oh yeah, I mean, well, at least over five FPS. Yeah, well now they're doing it completely using all of that fun path tracing technology with over half a billion triangles. That's a Ooh, lot of triangles. That's a lot of triangles. 30,000 materials and more than 2,000 particle lights all while maintaining the highest levels of fidelity. How big is this, Zach? Oh my gosh, well, let me tell you, it's about half of a Call of Duty install, I think. It's 108 gigabytes. Jesus! <laughs> if you've got a 50 series card and you want it to look like, where's that picture? You want it to look like oh, this? Oh, it, you want it go. to, you want your cheese drippy? like this card, uh, then <laughs> just go ahead and run that demo on whatever 50 series card you picked up. Good luck with the eight gigabyte TI. New chipset. Oh, already? Man, time flies when you're having some very deep rooted problems. <laughs> Intel LGA, this is the 1954 motherboard. This is a brand new, this is a Nova Lake S chipset. Uh, and yesterday, Intel revealed that they're preparing a brand new socket. And this leak comes from where a lot of these leaks end up coming from. Shipping manifests. There are nerds that will dig through the manifests from shipping companies and try to find out what the cargo descriptions are. A lot of fun. If you have extra time, maybe you have getting bored, you don't know what to do, just dig through cargo descriptions and, and shipping manifests from importers. So what they found is they found uh, some jigs. Now what are jigs? These are the materials that are used to make these chipsets and they're coming from overseas. Um, and they found a platform controller hub for this Nova Lake S platform. In terms of when we'll see this new chipset come out, if we're just talking about jig models and things like that, it's likely gonna end up being sometime in 2026, so we're still a little ways out from this. Intel has their plate full with the Arrow Lake refresh, um, which is likely gonna end up happening sometime in Q3 or Q4 of uh, this year. So Nova Lake we'll see in 2026, but we're already starting to see some leaks come along, so pay attention. Intel, this is a big moment for Intel. They have to make uh, some pretty sizable wins here to overcome some turbulent wins they've encountered. Single fan cards? Oh, you, J Jared always gives me a card that I'm gonna hate. That I'm it's, gonna hate. It's my favorite part of the news, I'll be honest. <laughs> Great job, as usual. We've got a uh, Zotac single fan, that was a 5060. To be quite honest, these renderings, it's one of the better looking single fan cards that I've seen. This is a Cyclone card. It's one of the coolest single fan cards, but you can tell it's just, so, so stripped down. They saved the solo for last. You got the Twin Edge amp, the X Gaming, all those beautiful cards, and uh, it will be released for all regions. So you'll be able to find this little cutie everywhere. They call it the solo, but as noted here, it's not a Star Wars reference. It means, it means a single fan. I'm alone. Solo. Say that again. If you've got a small form factor build that you're looking to cook up, cards like this can make a lot of sense. And a lot of times in small form factor builds, cards not really that visible to begin with, depending on the case that you end up going with. A lot of them kind of hide it away because they are typically so freaking ugly. Do you think they're gonna have an overclock version of this one? Uh, no. <laughs> well, just a little guy. Just a little guy. It's a little a, the, the TDP is 145 watts. I mean, this is running on nothing. I mean, you could run that off of your phone. Absolutely. <laughs> you got a microwave, like just, it's fine. It'll run, doesn't matter. This card will run on anything. Oh, we got something for the budget boys. Any budget boys and girls out here? Comment below if you're a budget boy. 
or girl. Budget-friendly RX 9060 XT graphics cards are tipped for Computex unveil next month. And when are we getting inventory, provided that it's available? Early June. Whoa. And so we kind of figured this would happen offset by about a month when compared to the 5060 Ti announcement and rollout. It's gonna be GDDR6, Navi 44, uh, fully enabled, outfitted with 2048 shading units, 32 compute units. Got all of these 5060 Ti reviews that have been dropping. We'll see what this card ends up looking like. Stacking up to Nvidia's card, I'm guessing they're gonna be more aggressive on price. You should be able to pick a unit for yourself by the first week of June. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see, see, we'll see, we'll about, see about, about that. We'll see, I've heard cards would be available before and then they were in fact not. The old cards are gonna be available. <laughs> <laughs> the old card trick, eh? NVIDIA RTX 5060 Ti with good launch, but not for the eight gig model. It looks like NVIDIA's plan did not quite work. Gee, I wonder why. Let's find out, shall we? Who could have seen this coming? Who could have seen this coming? NVIDIA made every effort not to give uh, reviewers the eight gigabyte card, as we reported. In fact, even the 16 gig didn't end up in the hands of many media outlets, which kind of sucked. According to 3D Center, this launch still appears to be good for NVIDIA regardless. Now, this is a German retailer that has run into some financial problems recently. Mind Factory said they sold 105 units of the 5060 Ti 16 gig on launch day. And then the way that they spin this as a positive launch is they say, hey, based on the fact that we're not selling as many graphics cards because we're having some business problems, this is a good result. I, I'm having a really hard time like digesting what what the story is here. <laughs> Nvidia cards at MSRP is something quite unheard of since the first GPU release in January, so that's already an improvement. Oh, I see I see what they're saying. They're saying that they sold over 105 units while having problems. Yeah. Which there's... is already double what they normally would have sold without having problems. So many variables here. There's a lot of variables. Look, there's that. He's in Germany right now. Look, wee oui, wee. Oui. Wait. <laughs> Intel investigating optimizations for CPU overhead on ARC GPUs. Intel has finally addressed reports regarding CPU overhead issues that have been circulating for the past few months. Now, when it launched, guys like Hardware Unboxed were uh, reviewing the card and made some comments in relation to ARC GPUs experiencing a performance drop when you paired them with older CPUs. Testing revealed that the B580 GPU suffers a sharp performance loss when you pair it with processors like the Ryzen 5 2600 or 5600 or Intel i5 9600K. In these particular configurations, the graphics card's performance takes a hit compared to setups with higher end processors like the 9800X3D. Intel has now acknowledged this. So it's been talked about online, but Intel has now put out a statement saying, thank you for your patience. We're aware of reports of performance sensitivity in some games when paired with older gen procs. We've increased our platform coverage to include more configs in our validation process. We're continuing to investigate optimization. Hey, as we move forward, we'll make sure to keep that in mind and uh, keep an eye out for updates. That's that's the long and short. That's the, the I guess, humanized way. Like that. I, I, it would have been so much easier to digest it. I'm just a simple guy. <laughs> we, we see you. That's all I need. Hey, we see you. Do you know anyone with an Intel graphics card? I do. You do? Link has one of them. Oh, one of our builders does. Yeah. He has like 17 He's like, views. this one's in my garage. Uh, Link build, doesn't count. bathroom build. <laughs> Link doesn't count. Intel is open sourcing its platform for generative AI. Works only for Intel hardware. No kidding, they want to sell you the hardware. Uh, yesterday, AMD announced an important update for generative AI. Uh, this is their collaboration with TensorStack and Stability. They came up with these optimized AI models for the 9070 and Ryzen AI Max series. And also Intel said, hey, wait, what? We, we have something we wanna share it with you. We would like to play too. We, we have generative stuff. Their AI Playground, which is what it's called, is designed for ARC GPUs, uh, including integrated variants. So apparently this extends a little bit to the integrated graphics side as well, which is yeah, wild. Uh, the AI Playground is much more than just an image generation tool. It refers to it as an AI hub, because why not? make more buzzwords for your product. <laughs> but the problem is that it only supports Intel hardware. Is it a problem or a feature? I think it's a feature until it's a problem. I like the way you think. <laughs> Great job, Intel. You're trying. <laughs> 
Driver update. We've been anticipating this for a while. There have been a lot of driver issues that have sprung up recently. So will it introduce new problems? <laughs> there's only one way. There's one way to find out, ladies and gentlemen. According to the change log, the update resolved some of those black screen issues that oh we had heard God. about uh, and improved stability across various games. But one other thing, a few other things. Reddit users noticed that within these new drivers, the scores were visibly higher on their graphics cards. Normally, normally synthetic benchmarks remain stable unless companies specifically target synthetic tests or are forced to adjust the frequency and voltage curve. Often this doesn't improve performance, but actually lowers it because it's more stable in that instance. When they were looking at it, they were seeing that their core clock actually went down mm. and it reduced their total wattage by seven watts. I smell an undervolt. Smells like undervolting to me, baby. Your mileage may vary depending on the games that you play and the card that you have. This isn't a guaranteed boost by any means. I don't wanna put that out there. But if you're already having black screens and issues and you download the driver anyway and you get a little boost, what's wrong with that? It's free 99. You can't afford not to take advantage of this driver. Not at all. If you have a similar experience, why don't you let us know? Anyone in the comments uh, get the new drivers going? And if you noticed uh, any performance increase at all. However minor, I'd love to know. Yeah. I've got another GPU for you. Oh, God. I'm just kidding, it's actually time for an ad! My favorite part of the video. Guys, if you're like this guy that commented on our last video and hated all the ads in here and also thinks that I'm a know-it-all, you will love this ad. Guys, go to metapcs.com <laughs> and get a ready-to-ship PC or a custom PC on our website. Now, the cool thing about the computers that we build is I don't force you to buy them. A lot of people that watch our videos like to build their own PCs, which we love, but if you or a friend says, you know what, I just want it built perfect from the ground up, tested and ready to go out of the box, you can go to our site and configure a system for yourself or get a ready to ship system that ships the next business day. Guys, uh, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> The Hyper Beast Mouse Mats are available on Amazon. We got white and black, black and gray, and full color. And you could also buy one with your new PC at metapcs.com. Let's get back to the video. I don't know everything, do I? I wanna know what kind of t-shirts they wanna see. That's true, we wanna get some more t-shirts made. Maybe some Hey Man, or like, what, what merch should we be putting out here, guys? Let me know, let me know down below. Yeah, leave a comment. Leave well, a comment. I, I promise you, I'll read them. Phil reads every single one. Sparkle has confirmed a 24 gigabyte card. But don't get excited yet. Boy, you can get excited, just don't stay excited. Okay, don't get excited again? <laughs> Sparkle hints at an ARC graphics card with 24 gigs of memory. We want we want a high VRAM monster of a card. The B580 features 12 gigs of GDDR6 across a 192-bit memory bus, but rumors say Intel might double the capacity to 24 gigs. The rumors clearly suggested that it would be a productivity targeted card rather than the gaming segment. Of course! But it turns out there might be a chance that these rumors refer to the gaming version after all. <gasps> so someone in the comments said 24 gigs and then a little, um, what do they call that dog? Doge. Doge dog. 24 gig. Uh, and then uh, Sparkle responded and said, how do you know? Doge dog with rose in mouth? Whoa, what does that mean? Things are getting heated. Is it out yet? Another response. Original plan was May, June. That's, a, that's spicy right there. You know how I know it might be real? Uh, emojis. Yeah. Yeah, emojis used. Sparkle used a little doge emoji. Now this is the part that crushes my soul at the very bottom of the article. Update. Sparkle Taiwan has first refuted the claim and later confirmed that the statement was issued by Sparkle China. However, the company claims that the information is still false. Are they covering it up? <gasps> Tinfoil hat time? Smell a conspiracy. Sparkle, you guys gotta get on the same page. Taiwan and China, you guys are, come on. Figure out what the other side's saying and give us a 24 gig card, <laughs> please. Intel still working on BGM G31 graphics card. There's a chance there will be a higher ARC GPU than the B580. Intel has kind of worked their way up on these ARC cards. They started very, very entry when they launched the cards initially. B580 kind of work up a little bit. It would be a natural progression. Let's see if it's true or not. Right at the bottom now we're here. 
So at the bottom now here, the XE3 architecture, codenamed Celestial, is now scheduled. So this new graphics, uh, discrete graphics, I'm guessing, is now scheduled to debut alongside Panther Lake, which focuses on low-powered integrated graphics. However, enthusiast main focus is on discrete graphics, so your dedicated cards, like your B580s, and it seems that Intel may have not said its final word. Right back into it, shipping manifests, the source for all the best leaks. Yes. Guys, if you wanna find out what stuff's dropping, just be a nerd and keep an eye on those shipping manifests. In fact, if you guys if you guys are bored and wanna do that and send us the details before these guys get it. Come on. Yeah. We'll please. Please, please send it over here. This reveals the development of the BGM G31 graphics card, which would be a higher end version compared to the G21 used in the B580. Now, just to temper expectations, this is for research and development purposes on the shipping manifest is what yeah, it was put literally in says for R&D purposes. There's no way to confirm at this stage if Intel is indeed still planning on this G31 GPU. More competition is great. Another possibility with this entire thing is that Intel's just moving inventory for already canceled graphics cards. Trusted leaker on Intel hardware says that we should still expect a B77. By the way, although a lot of discussion about BMG GPU said B770 is dead, I think we will look it in the future. Don't know what that means. Thanks, Raichu. Thanks, Raichu. The Radeon Pro W9000 is coming. This is the Radeon Pro series with that Navi 48. XTW GPU, unnamed card. It's gonna be part of the Radeon Pro W9000 series with that 32 gigs of memory. Last gen, you had a 48 and, uh, 48 and 64 gig variants, which I'm guessing you'll end up seeing. These are early yeah. leaks, so you're probably seeing one card. I can't imagine this is the only workstation they launched. It's worth remembering that AMD's advancing AI event is set for June, and they're gonna talk about the instinct GPUs for data centers, um, and it could be where we end up seeing these workstation cards unveiled. So we'll have to sure. keep an eye on that, see what's going on. Severance? Are we making Severance references? Guys, you ever binge the show Severance? Limited edition Severance keyboard features a built-in trackball. You don't see those a whole lot anymore. But aptly, there's no escape button. <laughs> How fun. This would not be practical in any way with my daily workflow, but that's not what it's meant for. It was inspired by Severance. Uh, this is the hit sci-fi thriller that I have watched and loved very much. I think everyone in this room has actually. The input peripheral enthusiasts at Atomic Keyboard that make a lot of very, very cool things now have this keyboard on a sign up for a limited edition macro data refinement dasher keyboard. Uh, so you can sign up to uh, to get notified when this is actually available for sale. I'm gonna sign up right now. Dude, we have to, this is sick. Can we have these in the office? We've gotta have at least one. We gotta have at least one of these bad boys. Compact layout, big old keyboard though. And the purpose of the design is the trackball and the cluster of the directional keys. I mean, look at these, you're up and down and left and right keys are all kind of center there, right to the left of the trackball. And uh, largely blue shaded device boasts a unique 73 key, 70% 70 layout with no escape, no control, and no options keys. What a, what a beautiful board. What other shows need a peripheral made? Star Trek. Star Trek, maybe Last of Us. Ooh. I don't know what you do there, but let's think about it. Any others that I'm missing that would be kind of fun? Let me know in the comments. Let's figure this out together. Let's come up with some, some good stuff that we can buy as, as good consumers. Guys, that's gonna do it for today. Uh, listen, I, I need a, one of probably the biggest favors that I've asked another person that I care about and know deeply, which is you. I know and love you so much. If you would hit the subscribe button and also like, and down below, let me know what graphics card you're rocking in your PC. Have we done this before? Have we asked this question before? Yes. Am I doing it again for engagement? Absolutely. We'll see you next time.